Let's talk to uh, Mac in uh, Glasgow. Hiya. Yes, Mac. Hiya. Um, I like to say that the coronavirus, I think it's just over-exaggerating a bit, um, mainly because the death rate is down 2%. That's round about the swine flu death rate. And what's happening is, 10 years ago, when the swine flu was out, out not everyone had Facebook. Not everyone had a, had a smartphone. Uh, and people are getting... People are on social media all the time now. We're never off it. Uh, 10-year-olds are on it now. It didn't went on when I was a, uh, 10 years ago, when I was a teenager myself. And you, you start to think... You start to think... Why do not we look at reality and look at facts? Why do we to exaggerate? Uh, for example, in the Daily Mail, there's a thing saying that the schools could be closed. Um, uh, this is Britain in a fortnight. Scientists reveal UK is on the same trajectory as Italy and is two weeks away from a similar lockdown. Well, that's not so, exaggerating, is it? Well, it is in a way. Cause, <clears> cause <throat> it's not exaggerating at all, page. Mac. Because Italy is now closed down completely, you can't yes, go to Italy, yes, and if you're there, down. you can't come out. Yes, but I don't think the UK will come to that. I think uh, I think what you need to look at is the death rate is two percent. Most people will get this virus. Well, so what is two percent? Is that two people in every hundred that get it are going to die? Yes. yes. That seems a lot. No, it's round about the same as swine flu. Uh, I I like watching um, Jeff Taylor. He's a YouTube blogger, and you see that to put this into perspective for people who get which has a getting this virus is quite low as well. It's not as round about something like two percent as well. And he was saying most more people die each year from the common cold we had done from this flu hey, or this, yeah. this virus. So And what far. are you uh, Mac, what are you doing to keep yourself safe? Well, I work in I work with um, old people so I've got to basically kind of keep myself by washing my hands all the time, use hand sanitizer. Mm. Uh, I don't really have the joys of uh, being I only phone in sick when I have to phone in sick. I don't phone in sick because I say, oh, well, um, my best pal has got this virus. I'm going to um, phone in sick. But I, I may have it. No, I'll wait until I'm actually got symptoms before I phone in sick. Mm. Obviously, I do have to make sure that all people I work with are protected. Uh, but I'm, an, I'm a frontline member of staff, so phone in sick for me I've got to think. I've got to think twice sometimes. All right. I got to think, and not like you know, you work in an office or you work in maybe doing a doing a call centre job where people can cover your shift. You are in frontline staff, and you got to think twice. Do I mm. phone in sick or I'm okay? And you always double thinking twice. I know quite a few times I maybe went in and the sniffles, and you think today might be wrong because I've got I've got the cold, and what a cold could be to you could knock someone off the edge who's let on in life. I think we can go to Jonathan now. Hello, Professor. Hello, how are you? I'm OK at the moment. I'm a bit worried now, of course. Um, yes, well, things have taken a, certainly a more significant turn after Boris's um, press conference. Did he, did he say everything you thought that he should have said? Um, almost. Um, I'm still very worried about the message in around the potential symptoms of this uh, coronavirus. They're, they're still focusing too much on the lower respiratory tract symptoms, you know, the dry cough and mm. the fever. <clears throat> um, the, there was a, now, it's, admittedly, it's a small study, but I, I genuinely think that this is going to pan out for most coronavirus infections, where they, they looked at the nine patients who picked up the virus in Germany, and seven of those people had just normal cold-like symptoms. It was a, a runny nose um, you know, upper respiratory tract yeah, infection. Yeah. And did it disappear like a, a sort of cold or a, a dose of the flu disappears? Yeah, absolutely. Seven days and, and it was gone. Um, right. Now, let me, think... let me ask you a couple of questions that have been worrying me because uh, I had a call from my son today. Uh, he came around. He said, right, Dad, you know, this is really dangerous and you're getting on a bit. You've got to be very careful. And I said, oh, that's cheered me up no end. He <laughs> said, yeah, yeah uh, uh, one person out of every hundred... Is going to die from getting this. Is that right? OK, on confirmed cases, uh, we're looking at a death rate of maybe as many as one in 50 people uh, dying from this. Mm -hmm. uh, and unfortunately, the, the deaths are skewed towards those who are getting old, so the elderly, mm -hmm. but also particularly people who are old but have other 
underlying conditions like heart disease or chronic lung mm. problems like COPD or asthma, that type of thing. OK. Is that, a, is that a higher mortality rate than people who get the flu or serious oh. chest infections? Well, certainly in terms of flu, I can certainly comment on that. And one of the messages that Boris did say, which I, you know, pat him on the back for, was this is not like flu, um, seasonal flu. We, we look um, at flu rates, probably fatalities, maybe 0.1%, so one in a 1,000 people, mm. which is as many as one in 100, maybe one in 50. Flipping egg. Well, that, that... Yeah, no, it, it is serious. You know, it's it's not like flu. We, we do have to um, take take this very seriously and, and slow this thing down. We're not going to stop it, uh, but we should should be able to slow it to some degree. Mm. So why is this so dangerous then, if you get it and if you have underlying problems? Well, that's a good question. Um, <clears throat> and, and I'm not sure we fully understand why these sorts of complications occur. <clears throat> But certainly, if, if you imagine somebody with something like a, a, a weak heart or, or a, a, a weak lung, pair of lungs, uh, they're, they're going to be struggling already to, to get enough oxygen into their bodies. And then if you throw on top this kind of viral pneumonia that can occur in some people, then that just makes life a lot worse. And unfortunately, it, it almost sets up a cascade of problems for your body. Um, you, you start to produce what, without getting massively technical, but I, just bear with me for a second. We, we call it a cytokine storm, mm. which which sounds uh, impressive, and it is. It's your immune response trying to fight the virus off. But unfortunately, it produces too many of these um, chemicals called cytokines, and what they do is ultimately result in multiple organ damage, and, and that's very often what people are dying from. Gosh. Well, I'd better go home now, really, because I've had cancer about 20 years ago. I've only got one kidney. Uh, although my heart is in tip-top condition, I have to tell you, blood sugar level is very low, cholesterol's low, good cholesterol's high. I just had a check. Yeah, but well, in, you, which, you know, in which case, don't, don't worry too much. It, yeah, it, but I, I've, I've had asthma since I was a child. I mean, it doesn't affect me very often, but um, it, it's an underlying thing that I have. Yeah, I think people with mild um, conditions, yeah, sure, the, the risk is going to be elevated slightly. But if we look at the deaths that are occurring where we, where we have a better understanding, so basically mm. outside of China, because sometimes it's very difficult to get um, information from China. So I don't think it's the government trying to hide it. I just think it, they've had such a massive problem. It's been difficult keeping on top. Um, <clears throat> if you look at the... What's happening here, for example, the deaths, and they are very unfortunate deaths, but they have mainly been in very old people with quite complex mm. diseases underneath that. So um, fingers crossed, uh, most people, well, we know that most people mm. are going to, to, to come through this and build up immunity. And if people actually get it and they go through it um, and didn't even realise they had it, uh, are they then going to be more immune from it? Yes, they will. That's, that's the wonderful thing about our immune systems is that the thing that gets rid of this virus is your immune system. And one element of that is, is memory. So your immune system remembers the foes that it's encountered. Uh, and then if it sees them again, it can react incredibly quickly and also incredibly potently. Uh, and so it stops these uh, viruses causing any problems in future. The, we know that coronavirus immunity does wane over time, so it starts to decrease, but that's several years rather than uh, weeks or months. And, and mm. that's one of the things that the government's trying to do. It's trying to build up this kind of herd immunity. So we, some of us get infected. We then aren't susceptible. So in following years, the outbreaks are, are more modest. So if you get a bit of a sniffle or a... <clears throat> I mean, this is, my throat's affected by this air conditioning at the moment. I'm not sure why. Um, should you go to the doctors straight away? Uh, no. Uh, so really, you should only be considering, um, and, and certainly don't go to the doctors or go to the hospital. You should always call one 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 or or the uh, GP surgery. And I think one one double one's probably the best because they are putting on new staff. Uh, they they will advise you what to do. And it, essentially, it's only the more serious people or, or people with more serious symptoms will require um, hospital treatment. And so the rest of us, um, if you've got mild symptoms, you'll just be encouraged to stay at home, try and limit the amount of contact you have with others. 
Do you think, I mean, I'm just looking at, I, I invited people to get in touch. I mean, here's one uh, from uh, a listener says, James, if I didn't keep hearing about corona on the radio and went into my town, you wouldn't know anything is wrong. It's 100% propaganda. Uh, well, it's certainly not propaganda, but I think she, her observation's right, that uh, at the moment I think most of us uh, probably don't mm. quite appreciate the challenge that lies ahead. And unfortunately, you know, whilst ever the, the reports, the case reports are in the uh, tens or hundreds, you know, it's, it's now just over 500, uh, suddenly, you know, that's not a number that's going to alarm you, but, but that can gather pace very quickly, as we've seen in Italy. And then suddenly when <clears throat> hospitals are struggling, you can't get intensive care beds and suddenly the deaths start into the thousands. I think that's when people will sit up. But unfortunately, it might be a bit too late then. Uh, Richard on Twitter wants to know, is there any gastric symptoms to this? Uh, yes, there are. Uh, it's not common. Uh, but I think from some of the case reports, people have presented sometimes with a, a mild diarrhoea, but it, it's mainly um, respiratory where, where the virus mm. will, will replicate. How many people, do, I mean, it's a difficult question, but do you think there are quite a number of people, probably 50, 60,000, maybe more, who have had this and gone through it without even knowing? Uh, probably not in this country. Uh, there certainly will be where mm. there are hotspots, places like Korea, like China. Um, but at the moment, I think our, because our surveillance at most, it was... Um, reasonably weak in the early stages that they've made improvements week on week to, to try and do more testing. Mm. And it's that that tells us how much virus is circulating and that's why we've suddenly started to see quite marked increases in uh, in numbers. Uh, and so I think the, the estimates, the guesstimates, should I say, are probably maybe as many as 10,000 people infected at the moment in the UK. But it's, uh, it's very difficult to pin it down in truth. Mm. I mean, it, they reckon now that a total of just under 30,000 people have been tested for the virus in the UK. I mean, that's not a very big percentage of the population here, is it? No, absolutely not. You know, it's 65 million. <clears throat> it's too late in the day for me to even try that sort of mm. mental maths. But it, but it is a tiny percentage. But what we did see in places like South Korea, who, who tested a lot more than, than we currently do, they, they're able to get on top of it and control the the, uh, the the spike of cases purely because they were able to identify it quickly and, and tell people, you know, isolate. Is it? Do you think it is more dangerous than than we're being told just to stop panic, or, or do you think we're being told everything now? Uh, no, I, th I think the message, <clears throat> excuse me, about how um, serious it can be. I, 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 you know, the numbers have always been out there. We've always known that this is a, a virus that can potentially uh, put 5% of those infected in intensive care and 2% of those people who get infected won't come out the other side. Uh, and so I think that element has always been out there. Uh, I think it's it's more around what we should be doing to try and slow the spread of the virus through our communities. But again, that that is changing day by day as the government realised just, just what a potential problem they've got. And what about, do you think that the Chinese knew about this before they told the rest of the world, but they tried to keep it quiet? Well, there's evidence, certainly, from the early cases. There was that uh, the young doctor who sadly died, who was doing his best to utmost uh, to, to, to alert the world that there were uh, cases of pneumonia that he felt looked very much like SARS. Um, but, but as soon as it was identified, I think, think the information, particularly the sharing of the science, was very rapid. Um, and, you know, it, it, it's difficult to see how they could have reacted faster because the, the, the outbreak was sort of uh, identified December 31st. The virus was first known in the middle of January. That's, that's incredibly rapid. And we've got diagnostic tests within the week. So... That's pretty good. That's pretty good sharing. Um, I've got a caller on I'd like to uh, bring on as well. Do you mind, Jonathan? Absolutely no problem. Um, Andrea, who's in Coventry. Hello, Andrea. Yes. Uh, hiya, James. It's Angela. I keep getting... Oh, me. Angela. Right. It says Andrea here. Right. It's Angela. Um, you've, yeah. got a, you've got a question. If you ask it while Jonathan is on, maybe he can answer it for you. Uh, hiya, Jonathan. Good evening. Hello. 
Um, I was just wondering, um, I have asthma and diabetes and joint problem, and I was wondering, at night time I seem to get a temperature and um, my breathing is a bit difficult, but they they rang me up to say I have to have my blue inhaler at dinner time. What do you think? Well, unfortunately, I'm not medically qualified, but I, I would be sure that uh, the, the GPs uh, looking after you will, will, will be giving you sound advice. I mean, you, you sound quite young, if you don't mind me saying. Um, thank you very much. I'm 56. I'm 57 this year. Well, there you, there you go. So so in, in terms of the uh, risks, for if you were to be unfortunate enough to get coronavirus, uh, you know, I can't deny the fact that you, you are at an increased risk of having more uh, serious chest problems because of the underlying um, uh, asthma. But we are seeing, in general, the more elderly people are. So, you know, we're talking more than 65 and, and even uh, higher than that. That's where there are real problems with, with trying to cope with this virus with the underlying conditions. Yeah, because I'm seeing my practicing nurse on, on Monday. They keep calling me up to make sure I'm all right. Well, you yeah, listen. No, that's, that's good. Uh, you listen, Angela, to what uh, they have to say, and uh, and um, I'm sure that they will give you the best uh, guidance and information. Thank you, uh, Angela. Um, so, Jonathan, people who have got underlying health problems, uh, the, the, their doctors will see them uh, as a matter of urgency rather than anybody else, won't they? Absolutely. So if you're, um, you know, 18, go go to the gym or go running every day and you've you've got suspected coronavirus infection they're not going to be overly concerned if you're 65 and have quite complex underlying disease then clearly there's there's a lot more uh, concern and worry about what impact the virus uh, will have and i think you know that the main thing is that if people are aware of the symptoms that they've got and, and if they do worsen uh, to phone one double one uh, and they will then start to to advise and if they need hospital admission then they'll start to arrange yeah. that but Hopefully, most you know most people won't won't need that. Most of us will be able to just uh, self isolate, stay at home, feel a bit rough for a few days, and then then go about oh. our lives normally. All right. Um, okay. Uh, it's pr still pretty shocking, though. Uh, one in every fifty people who get it are likely to die. That is quite a worry. It, no, it is. Uh, that's why we have to take it seriously. And what I would say to to anybody, Angela, or, or anybody else listening with um, underlying conditions is the, the best thing that they can do uh, for the foreseeable future is to try and minimise the amount of exposure that they potentially get to the virus. So if they can limit the amounts of times that they go um, in, into quite crowded places, you know, try and keep a safe distance from people, you know, one to two metres away if that's possible. Scrupulously clean with your hands because it is surface contamination that will spread this virus. And then also for those of us who develop these sorts of symptoms, we've all got to be good eggs. You know, if you've got cold-like symptoms, keep away from elderly relatives or people that you know who are, who are unwell. And wait, wait for that week. It's one week. Mm. That's all we're asking. And then, then start to visit people. OK. And if... Um, one last question. This, this whole uh, how serious it is because it's likely to kill more people than other viruses, is part of that because we have no treatment for it where we have treatment for others? Well, it's, uh, part of it is treatment, but most of it is is all to do with what we call herd immunity. Uh, and so it, it goes back to the point you were saying before about once you've had it, are you immune? One of the things that the government's trying to do, and it's, it's an impossible task in truth, is to allow the virus to trickle through the population so that over time people become infected. Those people who require hospital treatment because the infection is severe get the help that they need. Uh, and then over time, as more and more people become infected, more and more people are immune. And so in future, the virus doesn't have as many susceptible people in a population to infect. And so future outbreaks just, just become smaller and smaller and smaller and, and less noticeable. OK. Um, Jonathan, I'm sure we will all manage. We always do in these sort of times. And uh, we perhaps just now... Uh, whereas before, I, I thought we were just going over the top. It has to be said with this in, enormous amount of publicity we were giving to this. Um, but now it seems as if everybody's taking it quite seriously and that a lot of public events are going to close down as well. And that seems to be what is going to happen. What I don't understand is if you start closing things down, when do you consider it's OK to open them again? Well, that, that's one of the, the, the conundrums. So I think, you know, I've heard, and again, it sort of makes sense, 
In terms of spreading the infection, large gatherings are not going to be any greater risk than a fairly small gathering like going to a party or a crowded pub. But what happens with these large events is that they put a strain on the emergency services. So police have to be there. You've got to have lots of ambulances and things like that on standby. And it's it's to maintain or, or, or to diminish that uh, that that's the the main um, aim. In terms of school closures, uh, again, there's evidence that they work, but you have to keep the schools closed for for 12 weeks or so. You know, until until the outbreak has actually gone through the community. Because if you close a school for two weeks or a couple of days, then reopen it, you, you've had made no impact whatsoever on mm. on the spread of that virus. All right. Uh, Jonathan, thank you very much indeed. I'm sure we'll talk again. Jonathan Ball, Professor of Virology at the University of Nottingham. If you've got any questions, call us 03444991000. One in every 50 people who get this virus, my son told me, and I said, no, you're being stupid, don't be ridiculous. But it seems that that is a fact. That's more worrying. Uh, Paul in, uh, where are you, Paul? Wolverhampton. Yes, Paul. Hello, mate. You're all right. Yeah. Uh, I'm just trying to get you to uh, stop panicking a little bit, mate. I think uh, I know you're a bit nervous about it, and, and obviously your son didn't do you any favours this afternoon. Um, but I'm, I'm just listening to that guy that you've just been speaking to, answered a few of the questions or put it on the line. Obviously, with the flu virus, obviously we found a vaccine, and then most people that have it that I know, because I've, I've never had flu, uh, I'm lucky. Uh, I have I have one probably heavy cold a year, and then that's it. Um, but whenever I see somebody who has the uh, flu vaccine, they seem to get worse before it sort of like takes effect. Yeah. Now I was listening to Boris Johnson on, on my way up. I'm a commercial gas engineer, and obviously I go into many care homes. I have to, you know, I run up and down the country. I mean, like today, I've gone from Wolverhampton to Newcastle, and I'm on my way back to Wolverhampton. Mm. Uh, so I obviously meet lots of people. Now, obviously, I'm doing what I've been advised, you know, wash your hands as regularly as possible and this, that and the other. But it's the underlying... I mean, what the figures that haven't that I think people would have their minds put to rest is obviously they've told us how many people have been uh, infected and have caught the virus and, and have self-isolated um, and how many people have died. But why aren't they telling us how many people that have been um, found to be infected, mm. have self-isolated, and now are well again. Um, and also from the Boris Johnson, um, when I was listening to one of the guys that was, I can't remember which one it was, um, that sort of stated it. And he was saying that, obviously, the young... I mean, I, I'm 51 this year, so I don't think I'm in, I'm in quite good health. Um, I don't... I'm not worrying about it. If I do get it, I think I should be OK. Yeah. I've got I, not that I, have, I know of. I've got no underlying uh, health issues. <clears throat> but he was saying that people need to catch it, like your guy that was just saying then that you've just just been speaking <clears throat> to. That the immune system is a great memory, and it will then obviously remember the issues that it's got. But I think what where that a lot of people are worrying is they're not that giving as many facts as I think there is, but they're not also giving us the facts of right. I think it was 500 and odd people that have been um, infected there. Now, 200 of them are all OK now, which would put people's minds up, if you understand what I mean. I do, and they, 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 they don't seem to give us that kind of information. No, and I think that would stop people. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, like your, uh, the other guy that says, uh, I think, tweeted in, said he walked around his town and you wouldn't think that any anything's going on. And I mean, mm. I'm going to many different cities and... Some of the big cities you do see, like Manchester, I was in the other day. Uh, there was people with face masks, and like, like you say, mm. we're not sure whether it makes any difference. Now, if that's entirely up to them, if they want to do that, and maybe they might be protecting people just in case they have got it and they don't know about it, yeah. which is a way I'm looking at it. But I think it's, it's just they should give us some more figures of, right, like I was saying, the 500 and odd people have been tested. But out of them 500 and odd people, we now know that 125 of them have recovered and are OK after the two, yeah. two weeks of self-isolation. And I think it would give people a little bit more hope and it would stop them panicking a little bit more. Um, I mean, I've noticed when I do go and do the shop on, you know, on the weekend, the shops are a lot quieter. 
All right. So, um, well, we'll uh, we just have to go with the flow, Paul. Thank you very much indeed. Let's talk to Dean. Good evening, Dean from Yorkshire. All right, Jim. Wakefield. Wakefield, yeah, now Leeds. Now Leeds. Wakefield is not Leeds. Near Leeds. Well, yeah, it's near Leeds. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm just a bit worried about this going. I've watched like you watched it earlier, and mm -hmm. I've got I've got an ex partner that we still get along, and she's got CHPD and bad asthma. She's got a cold and a cough at the moment. I'm very worried about her. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've I've got upset. I'm really upset about this. I can feel myself coming on now. A little bit upset about it, to be honest with you. Because what I've heard in your show tonight, uh, I'm worried about losing people, like a lot of people are across the country. And, and, and I've even heard stuff on social media, Twitter, Facebook, about uh, even pets can get it. And now I'm living alone. I live alone like you, with your dog. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I, I, there's no point in getting yourself too upset about this, Dean. Um, I, can, I can understand how you feel. Uh, I'm told that uh, dogs cannot get the virus, so you don't need to worry about that, OK? And I can yeah. understand how you feel about them. But if your friend has these underlying health issues, then she should be getting help from her doctor. I'm sure her doctor will know and be keeping an eye on her. I've t well, I've, I've told her to ring 111 up and she... Uh, not to put too fine a pound on it, she's... Uh, she said, I don't really like to say, but talk about somebody I'm not on the air like this, but she's, she, she's an alcoholic and she doesn't take it in, what she has to do. And I'm trying to, I'm ringing her up every hour on the hour at the moment. She's getting annoyed with me ringing up at the moment just mm. to check on her because I'm very concerned. I'm yeah. family members and stuff like that. Have you spoken to her family members? She doesn't like me talking to them because we're an ex, we're, we're ex partners, but we get along. Mm. And, and me and my family don't, and she doesn't like me talking to her family, so... I have thought about it, yeah, but yeah. I don't, I, I don't like make it look like I'm sticking my nose in where it doesn't belong, but I am. <laughs> yeah, you are, and I can understand how you feel, but you can't have force her to do anything she doesn't want to do. No. But no. what about your own health? Are you okay? I'm okay. I'm not. Uh, I'm, I'm fine. I've got no cold or all like that. I'm just. I've got a bit of a sniffling nose because I've been. Getting upset since I saw since I saw the the, the news on on telly earlier. Mm -hmm. You mustn't you mustn't let it get to you like this. I know I know it's difficult, but it you know we we'll get through it. I hope and, so. And even even people who have underlying health issues aren't necessarily going to die from it. You know, it's I'm, only. I'm forty one. Well, then you're, you're, a, you're a, a child, aren't you, really? Yeah, but I've come, I know I've come through a lot of things. I, uh, a few things that's happened like this in the past, and, but I just think it just seems to be with sporting events getting cancelled and mm. it seems to just be a lot more serious. Well, I think, I think it is I'll more serious back. than uh, uh, we were led to, to believe and I think one of the reasons why... I mean, I thought probably there was something else going on, and I think we now know that it is quite an infectious disease and it spreads quite quickly. But the vast majority of people, even if you have underlying health issues, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, you are going to be affected worse. I mean, you have the chance of that, of course, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you will be. And, of course, if you have underlying health issues like your partner does or ex-partner, then she will have um, a doctor who will be aware of her situation. Yeah, and I hope they get in touch with her because it's hard. It's hard knocking sense to into her at the moment about it all. She's, uh, I, thought, I, had to get a, I had to bend over backwards for her to watch the news early on telly to mm -hmm. take it in. <laughs> but, you know, if, if as long as you're around and you check on her every day... And you yeah. make sure she's okay. I'm and if, doing that, yeah. And if she isn't, then you'll have to, you know, you'll have to get a uh, an ambulance. You'll have to go to hospital. But yeah, well, I'm, 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 I'm just, I will do that, and I'm going to ring in again before nine o'clock just to check mm. in again. And there's, I'm, uh, there's a lot of elderly on the street, a lot of elderly on the street where I live, and 
I've been going down and asking if they're all right. And uh, just a lot, bit, bit more concerning. And I've, and I've known anything else in my lifetime, to be honest with you. Well, that's, that's what it seems like, anyway. Oh, come on, listen. You're only young, and uh, and and you know you have your dogs. Look at it this way. You you've got dogs. They need to be looked after. So you you know you've you've got to be positive for them. Dogs sneeze daily, and I go upset. <laughs> well, I understand how you feel. I get I get emotional like that from time to time. I must admit, uh, and I get more emotional about my dogs quite often than people. Um, yeah, well, I'm, I'm same, same way out. But you know, you you've 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 got to stay positive for them because uh, they rely on you for their food and for their shelter and everything and for their exercise. So uh, you can't let yourself get into a deep depression, right? Well, well <laughs> I feel like I'm going that way. I'm, I'm getting upset now. Well, don't. Why are you getting upset now? Just worried. I'm just really worried. Worried. Well, listen, you, you don't need to be worried. We're all worried to a certain extent. We're all in this together. And you've got a lot of mates listening on the on the wireless, and uh, you've. Got... Oh, yeah, we'll listen to you every night, James. Well, that's nice. And uh, you've got other friends as well. And you're, if your ex partner is not listening to what you say, you're just going to have to make sure that you're keeping an eye on her as well, aren't you? Yeah, I'm doing that. Yeah. I'm doing my best, yeah. Yeah. And so you, you know, you're very important in the scope of things of where you are in Wakey, and you need to be there. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing my best to keep in touch and stuff. What about friends other than her? Have you got friends you can talk to, or someone else you can ring? I've not. I've got a few friends round about me, but not not as many as I used to have. No. Mm. Is there someone you could ring now and have a chat with? Not really. I've, well, not really. No, cause my family don't get on. And, mm. uh, I've rung the Samaritans before mm. when, in, in other situations. And they're, and they're always good. Just frightening. And mm. I don't mean to bring your show down, James, at all. I just just thought, were you talking about it tonight and what mm. I was on telly? I needed, just thought, I'd just talk to you about it because I know you're worried yourself. Mm. And well, I, I am more worried today, but listen, I'm not, I'm not sort of uh, uh, going to get all upset about it. There's, there's nothing we can do. There's no point in getting miserable and upset, OK? Yeah, yeah. I'm a considerable amount older than you. I used to listen to you when you're on the radio air in Wakefield. Not wrong. When I was on radio air in, Wakefield, in Leeds, near Wakefield... Yeah. Uh, I was uh, I was thirty, twenty nine, thirty. I don't suppose you were really born. Well, I, I was really young, but I, mm. I, remember, I did remember listening to you. Yeah, so you see, life. you know, you're a young man, right? You've got lots to live for. Oh, I have, yeah. What are the names of the dog? Well, my mid dog was uh, Roxy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's Patadel Terrier. Oh, they're lovely. I like Patadel Terriers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she's noisy, but uh, yeah. I wouldn't have her any other way. <laughs> right. You ring me up and let me know you're OK in a few days, right? I will do, James, I promise. All right, you take it easy, and if you Don't feel bad, me. ring back again and you can talk to one of us here. Or ring the Samaritans, have a chat with them. I will do. Thanks. All right. OK, Maddie. Take it, and don't cry. I don't want any more of that, OK? All right. Oh, come on. <laughs> You've got to promise me you're going to try and put a brave face on it. I'm doing my best. I know. I know what it's like when you get down there. I've been there. I know exactly what it's like. So, are you going to be all right? Yeah, I will be. I'm going to make a coffee and settle down. Go and make a coffee. I'm going to have a coffee too. Black, no yeah. sugar. No, it's not a good idea. All right. Talk all to right. you later. Bye. Then, bye. Take, take it easy. Let's talk to Wendy. Hello, Wendy. Hi. Um... Would you like to say that the Prime Minister said that the RV70s really shouldn't take a cruise? And we were booked to go on a cruise. My husband, 71, like you, had uh, kidney cancer, bladder cancer, and. Gosh. Um, spit heart valve. So it was like. He's doing um, well. <laughs> he is, isn't isn't yeah. he? He is, rather, yeah. So this was like an anniversary mm. present that we had made. 
Everybody's got to make choices for themselves at this stage, but we've yeah. made a decision not to go. Right. And uh, went to the travel agent <clears throat> yesterday before um, this was announced that over mm-hmm. 70s, even mm-hmm. healthy over 70s, shouldn't cruise. And to our amazement, um, we'd already been to the hospital for a, a cover letter just in case. I don't think and, I'd go on a cruise even if I was uh, well, fit and no, healthy, the, to be honest. You made the, <laughs> we made the decision about four weeks ago. That uh, are they going, going to give you your money back, Wendy? Well, yes and no. Um, they've deferred the cruise to next year, to August next year, any time next year. Mm. Uh, with, I think it's £190 per person to... Um, gratitude, really. But we'd made our mind up after seeing these people trapped on the cruise ships and everything else. And I was surprised, not surprised, that they um, even let the cruise ships run for this long. I think what it is, so many people have cancelled holidays like that, that they would be running at a loss anyway. There wouldn't be enough people to um, take the ship out. So I don't know, but it was supposed to be in the Caribbean, but uh, Mm -hmm. it's better safe than sorry. I think you're right. And I think, you know, the last thing you would want to do is get ill whilst you're away. I can't even imagine being cooked Mm. up on a ship. That would be, like, my worst nightmare. But we've we've all had to take um, things to do, not to do. I mean, I've chosen not to see my family in Ireland. Mm. Um, we, I haven't got much family, but we've got wonderful neighbours, and that's a lot to be said. Yeah. It, it, you know, that they look out for us. And I just hope your last caller's got some good neighbours that will look out for him as well. Yeah, it's very sad when you, you get... It is, because when you're yeah. on your own living with... It, it's all yeah. right hearing news and sharing it with a partner. Mm. Or, or at best, your son, he meant well, <laughs> bless him. Um, <laughs> but sharing it with another human being. But if you live on your own, which I have done... Mm. It, it's even more scary because that's all you tend to think about. Yeah. Um, so, like, I'm doing early morning shopping, so I'm not near to anybody. Mm. Um, How is your health, Wendy? How are you? I, I'm okay. I've had fibromyalgia since I was 35. From I, Funnily enough, I had chicken pox, mm. and the virus doesn't leave your body. And from then... I've, I haven't been able to work or I have oh a lot of time in bed or not able to do anything. And they, they don't really know what it is, but they just say it's fibromyalgia, which mm. I, it, it was confirmed by a rheumatologist, but I don't know. But I'm, I'm OK. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, as I say, I'm 65 and I'm... I'm doing okay but i'm yeah. still going the hairdressers next week <clears throat> well quite right i gave up hairdressers but i think that's a very good idea uh, how well, long is it since uh since your uh, your guy had uh, his kidney cancer well he had kidney cancer uh 10 years ago mm. and they used um a form of tb tb yes yeah, right. um, a, a, a new well this um, guy over Birmingham, a researcher, found that TB um, or people with TB didn't get the kidney cancer. So it was a stage four, so he was really lucky. Mm. And all they treated it with was um, TB and... They didn't uh, They didn't take his kidney out? No. All right, no. very so lucky. It, but it was a stage four tumour. Mm. So it said he was... So lucky it hadn't burst through the bladder. Yeah. But he's been going every year, every six months for the last ten years. Mm. And he had his kidney out, which was an unrelated, different cancer altogether a year ago. Oh. So, um... He's been through it a bit. He has. There's other bits and pieces missing as well. But... Oh, we don't want to talk about <laughs> that. <laughs> but you love him. So... Of course I do, yeah. I mean, we've, it was our 20 years anniversary with second marriages and mm. all the rest of it. 
but we've got two dogs. I've got a Daisy May and a Rosie. You've got a Daisy May too, have you? Yeah. Ah. She's a little shih tzu, mm. and she's so sweet and kind. Oh. And I used to rescue Beglington Terriers. Gosh, that takes me back. Yeah, not many people know. Uh, it's no, uh, they've got a very strange face. Right. Yeah, the people think that she's either a, a funny-looking poodle or mm, no. crossed with a lamb. <laughs> they were bred by Pittman up in Northumberland. Yeah, they, mm. they've got an amazing history, haven't they? Yeah, absolutely. But, um, this one, I think it, she's a bit... I, I don't think she'd uh, <laughs> be bred to do anything. She's a bit dainty on the dainty side. <laughs> But uh, she, I think she ta- I did hear you say, was it last night, something about your dog thinks she's male? Well, yes, one of them, one, one of my, yeah, I, my, my, uh, my dog date, Lulu, who actually behaves more like a male dog. Yeah, well, Rosie does. It? Yeah. I, I, I assume in the same aspect. But, I, you know... Yes. I think if you have uh, if you have that sort of thing in the in the human race, you must well, you do, of course, yeah, yeah. It's perfectly gets, normal. But Daisy gets a bit worried. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so does my Daisy. But there we are. <laughs> Listen, Wendy, I've got to go. I'm going to talk about motorways, but uh, give your husband my best wishes, and I think you made a very very wise choice not to go on the cruise. All right, darling. Yeah, thank you. Good luck to you as well. Let's talk to Tim in Liverpool. Gosh, it's a long time since I spoke to you, Timbo. Yeah, it is, James. How oh. are you, anyway? Well, I think I'm all right. How are you? Do you know, I've had, I've had a snuffly nose for weeks, <coughs> quite snuffly, mm. um, and, and all of that routine for a good few weeks. So I, th- I think there's something going around anyway, other than that, which is because everybody else seems to be snuffling where I am as well. Yeah. Um, so I think there's definitely something else going on and people are perhaps confusing that with them having the coronavirus and they're thinking, well, it's not as bad at all as anybody's made out. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, I uh, I, th- I think there is that, of course, and I think if people actually let their guard down... I've been quite um, uh, flippant about it. I've just thought everybody's going over the top and this is just... But I'm beginning to get slightly more worried about it now. I think we should all be worried. That's the truth of mm. it. I think that there's no cure for this. I've had pneumonia twice, and that was absolutely hideous. Yeah, I've, um, I've had so, pneumonia. Yeah. yeah, and it's not very nice, is it? It's no. been horrible. In fact, last time I had pneumonia, I was in the Big Brother house. Well, I got it. I was in hospital when yeah. I got it. So, um, that well, was that was similar to being in the Big Brother house. Yeah, but it, <laughs> yeah, it's probably worse, actually, James, in the Big Brother house. <laughs> You're amongst all those idiots. Well, yeah, but that yeah. took my mind off it, so that was OK. Um, well, you could always throw things at them and beat yeah, them up and yeah, yeah, slap yeah, them yeah. about and everything, as, as they richly deserved. So well, last... To me... L- go on. Sorry, go on. No, no I was going to say, last time that we spoke, which must be over a year or so, uh, you had all sorts of uh, medical problems. How are they going on? Well, I've still got them. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm quite ill, but um, mm. the reality is, is I'm on... Um, I've got no immune system anyway. I'm on immunosuppressants. Um, I've had a metallic heart, a metal heart valve fitted. So obviously I'm at serious risk and I'm already self-isolating. I'm not leaving my yeah. house at all, I'm not going to any appointments or anything. Mm. And I think that the reality is uh, it, it, big business is controlling this um, because it, all the talk at the moment is how businesses are going to lose so much money. Mm. It's not about how safe people are. It's about big business losing money. Well, I don't think the big businesses are going to be able to uh, worry about losing money uh, before long. Susan, dear. Good evening, James. Good evening, Susan. What can I do for you? Um, I've just got home. Um, I just, I've just tuned in, and um, you said that this gentleman bought you some hand sanitizer before he even bought you the meal. Mm. Well, I think this is getting stupid. There's no need to do all this over hand washing. Just hand wash when it's necessary. Well, um, I think a lot of people want you to hand wash every time you leave one room and go into another around here. Yeah, we have to do it. We've we've got somebody at each door here with a bottle of hand sanitizer and a towel. Look, you're being silly. No, no, seriously. I mean, it's you know very. I'm not doing that. Well, no, you're in Exeter. I mean, you know. 
doesn't matter where I am. I won't do that. I will wash my hands when I've been to the toilet or handled something, and I think I should wash my hands. I'm not going to do this. It's ridiculous, James. No, you will do what you're told by the government, right? No, I no. won't. I'll yes. do what I think is fit. No, no, we can't have people behaving like that. That is just the uh, way to anarchy. Well, no, no, if that. you're told to go and wash your hands, you go and wash them. How, how is the government going to keep an eye on 72 million people? Very hmm? easily. How? We've got CCTV cameras everywhere. If you've got a mobile phone, we're keeping an eye on you. No, you hmm. can't do that because I keep my phone in my pocket when I'm working, when I'm cleaning and when I'm doing everything else. There'll be a way, don't you worry, Susan, there'll be a way. If you're not washing your hands, we'll know. I will wash them when I feel it is necessary. The other thing is... Every time, have you, hang on, have you washed your hands since you came in from work? Yes, I washed them actually before I left work. OK, but then you went out into public transport. Have you washed... I went on the bus yeah. and I held the bar with my sleeve pulled down. Well, have you washed your, um... Have you washed your clothes? I'm not going to wash my clothes. Well, you've got virus all course. over it. Don't be silly. You've got virus everywhere. You can't carry on like that, can you? The virus isn't everywhere, James. Well, we don't know where it is, do we, Susan? Well, it's not on... You can't keep doing that. What do you mean? You want me to wash my clothes every night? Yes! You've been out. You need to... And where are your shoes? Are they in the house? They should be left outside. No, my shoes are in the hall. I've got my fluffy bunny slippers on. Are they clean? Well, they should be. They're only used in the flat. What are you trying to insinuate? They must be clean. They've just been in my flat. Well, they your feet have been, have been, been outside. Flat. Your feet have been outside and then they've gone in your fluffy no, bunny no, no, slippers. no, 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 no. no. Now, this is all gone out of time. What were you talking about with that gentleman being alone? I missed it, please. Well, I'm not going to go through that. You should have been listening earlier. How dare you well, only couldn't... listen to part of it? I mean, I, honestly. I, I, I couldn't. I could only turn it on when I got in from cleaning. Have you not heard of earphones while you're working? No, 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 no. It's too dangerous. No, download the Talk Radio app. You can wear headphones. You don't need to mix it. We're just talking to a, a, no, a lovely... No, I need to be fully conscious and fully aware when I'm cleaning. I might fall over and hit, drop the mud, mud bucket somewhere. Well, anyway, it was just a gentleman who lives on his own and okay. he was feeling quite vulnerable and quite upset right, about okay. his... His partner, who refused to take uh, uh, advice about... A bit like you, I imagine, just a bit like you. Yeah. If you were my partner, I'd be in tears most of the time, too. OK. Well, oh. the, the, the lady didn't take advice on what? On the virus, every... Look, you've got... And you're not doing it either. When I say you've got to clean your hands when you go out of the house, when you come into the house... I've done the, that. The dirty clothes that you wear outside, you should wash those when you get in. I'm not doing that every goddamn day, James. Don't you're you blaspheme on my show? For goodness <laughs> sake, what the hell do you think you're doing? Look, it's not necessary. Just be careful. All right, OK, let you off. Thank you, Susan. Have a nice evening. Andy's in es 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 Essex. Andy's in Essex. Andy. Good evening, James. Hi. Hello, mate. I'll keep it short, because I understand we haven't got a lot of time. Um coronavirus, I just feel we're, ha we're handling it quite badly. I mean, it's common sense that people with underlying, underlying illnesses and elderly need to be really careful. But other than that, I just feel we should just be carrying on as normal because from all accounts, it's like a bad to dose of the flu. So maybe it's just something we all need to get because the damage we're doing to our economy is unbelievable. Well, I thought that until I listened to the Prime Minister today. And what he said, uh, I'm afraid, was far more worrying. This is a, a virulent virus uh, that spreads very quickly and uh, the death rate is far higher uh, than if you get flu, for argument's sake. If you, if you get this, apparently, I'm, I'm told by a professor who was on earlier, one in 50 people who get it will die, and that is a very high percentage. It is, but I think it's going to be personal choice, James, because... Um, some of the stories I've heard coming out of Italy where people are confined to their homes and there's police waiting on, 
you know, every every street corner to turn them back. I mean, you've got to bear in mind this is going to be people committing suicide because they can't get out of their homes. Um, there's going to be dom probably domestic murders where people that aren't getting on very well are going to end up killing each other. Um, and I just think it's a personal choice that people have got to take. Obviously, mm. we need to protect the vulnerable. But other than that, I just feel it's our choice to, to do that. If you're really that bothered, then just don't go out. But Well, I think, you know, if it, if it is as uh, contagious as they're saying, and if they say, they haven't said, uh, they've just said if you've got a, 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 a bit of a cough or a cold or, you know, feeling a little unwell, uh, then you need to stay indoors. And if you have it, it, it may well pass quite quickly, but it can be very dangerous to certain people, particularly with underlying medical problems. Yeah, so I, I understand that. You know, I mean, they wouldn't, a... listen, they would not come out, Andy, say what they've said today in the way that they've said it today unless it was very serious, because you're quite right, it is going to affect the economy. And so they cannot, they would not take a risk unless it was a 100%, 1,000% necessary to do so. Yeah, as, uh, James, I really think it's down to personal choice. Well, you no, it's not, because you... Shut uh, the country it's, down, can you? You can't well, you shut can, the country uh, down. Well, you can do it, and that's what Italy have more or less done. And it's not personal choice, because if it was personal choice, uh, you then go and infect as many people as, uh, as you like. And if you have it, or if you even if you don't know you have it, uh, you could be infectious. So it's not, it's not um, personal choice to you, and uh, it really is... Um, it really is, uh, it's, it's, it's a little naughty to say that because we want people to stay away. When the government say, look, it is serious, we'd like people to keep away from each other, keep out of crowded places, etc., etc. I think we need to listen. Yeah, obviously, if you've got, you know, you've got the illness in the first place, it would be irresponsible to, to go out. But if you're fit and healthy, why should you be confined in your, in your home? 